Tú me debes una noche con maldad. Yo soy preso de esos besos y tu piel. Yo sé que eso se repite otra vez. Baby, te quiero para mí. Pues yo te elijo, siempre apunto a lo fijo Por eso estoy contigo yeah. Y porque la pasamos genial Es un castigo yeah. Eso es lo que conmigo Encontraste tu abrigo yeah. Y por ahí encontraste algo más Tú lo sabes No nos desvimos del caso Solo tú y yo mujer Tú eres perfecta, tú eres mi caro Y yo puedo ser tu nena Sé que tú quieres más de eso Flaca, tírame ese hueso Que él no te dio lo que te dio Solo hablo del sexo Lo que yo te di Baby, te quiero para mí Instinto nos decía que esa noche juntico no quería y la ganas de ver nos ganaría, pero no fue así. Vamos lenta, ya que si nos apuramos no disfrutamos de el momento. Ya lo vamos a nada. Dale lento, ya dile a tus amigas que Estás en la escuela y vamos a jugar. Ella sabe que quiero a mi mamacita. Ella también quiere que seamos felices. Ella la que se apresura a la vueltica. Ella, 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 ella es intimidez. Como la ven, no le importa dónde y cuándo. No hay nada no he hecho, no soy el que la mando. Nunca lo seré, su carácter no es de niña. Que la puede controlar cualquiera. Aquí me encanta, yo lo sé. Independiente, vamos lento y verás. Y me encanta, yo lo sé. Independiente, vamos lento y verás. Vamos lento, ya que si no se apura. Sabes que no es, te doy el desquite, que me quites todas esas ganas que te tengo mujer. Todo el mundo sabe que tú y yo somos más que pana, pero nos vamos lento, que el que se apura no llega a nada, no llega a nada, no nada. Y me encanta, yo lo sé, independiente, unos lento. 
just met you, but you know, oh girl, you blow my mind, I know, what I would like to do, but, you just keep on talking, I see your dog needs walking, uh-huh. your folk drive you insane, mm-hmm. I know, yeah, that's true, of course you ain't the one to blame, keep on talking to me. to me but I just want to see you move yeah, I just want to see you move I just want to see you move yeah, I just want to see you move sure I like to listen it's not like I don't want to know it's just that you've been talking
What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Shout out to the CIA. One love to the FBI. What is happening, people? You see the title of the You see the title of the show. Stupid stays stuck. Stupid stays stuck. Oh, man, well, man, oh, man, what are we about to get into today? Glad you asked. Glad you asked. But before we get into that, I'm going to need everybody to do what we always do over here. Get to know each other. Go ahead and put your age, your gender, and your city in the chat room. Go ahead. Your age, your gender... And your city in the chat room. Get to know each other. Kind of see what's going on. Mm hmm. That's what I want you to do as we go ahead and get into this uh, back and forth. Because, hey man, stupid does stay stuck. Now, you know, in the black community, we got this whole thing of talking about somebody stuck on stupid. You stuck on stupid, man. You stuck on stupid. You stupid in the mud. <sighs> but one thing that I have realized is for black people in general, black men in particular, we are not ever, ever... Ever, 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 ever supposed to change, evolve, grow, mature, no nothing. Whatever it was you believed when you were 14 years old, you're expected to still hold those same positions or else you run risk of not being a real nigga. I mean, let's just go ahead and call it what it is. If you don't believe the same things you believed five years, 10 years, 20 years ago, you run the risk of being called phony, Whatever a sellout, all, all kinds of pejorative things. But the funny thing is, this isn't the way the rest of the world works. You know, I find it funny, Felicia. That in the rest of the world, other thinking human beings are allowed to update or even change what they may have believed on the topic when presented with new facts, data, statistics, and or information, lived experience. Interesting how that works, huh? You know, go back 20 years ago, 
30 years ago. Let's go 30 years ago. Let's go all the way back to 1990. 1990, the notion of having an LGBTQ, whatever the pronouns are, uh, being living out and out and about was just now starting to kind of take hold. But we had always known these people had been in our world. Flash forward to 20 years later, and you got an entire movement to where now people are trying to make it mainstream, to where it's just everything's okay. Politicians who have once held diehard beliefs based on their religion or whatever have had to update their positions, even moderate, completely change. Take into consideration former President Barack Obama. He had to actually go on record saying, you know what? He's moderated and or changed his belief. Let's take something that's not so polarizing in sexuality. Let's just talk about, take anything. And the rest of the world can evolve or change. But black folks, we tend to hold black people to an unrealistic standard. Now, black women, black women are far more apt to buck against that tradition. Black women can moderate. Black women can actually change, grow and improve. But what I find troubling is so many of you black men, you can't. Either you can't because if you do, you're going to be called a sellout, wishy-washy, fake, fraud, whatever, whatever by other men to share your reflection, or you just outright feel as though you're being disingenuous. Well, here's the problem, guys. Stupid stays stuck. Stupid stays stuck. How are you going to go around calling yourself, you know, an, an, an intelligent person? A thinking person. And stay rooted to the same old thought processes. And then talk about today is a new day. The world has changed. It's a global economy. We have the internet and people can talk and this and that. Okay, well, great. <laughs> great. But brothers, I would tell you this. Stupid stays stuck. And whatever you believe, you whatever you believe should be able to stand up to logic, reasoning, the scientific method. You should, if you have a if you have a deeply held belief, it should stand up to the scrutiny of challenge. Why are we talking about this? Well, um, several reasons. And I don't want to go into all the specific ones, but i tell you one thing. One of the things I see brothers in particular have an issue with is when we talk about image. The need to dress, act, and present yourself in an age-appropriate manner. Why is it met with so much problem with a lot of brothers? I don't, I, I have an idea, but here's the conversation I want to have. Change bothers those who don't want to do the work. That's my opinion. I think the people who don't want to do the work don't like change because if you're already up, if life is going good for you right now, why rock the boat? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's not the way I think. I'm always trying to improve, always trying to get better. But I realized I'm in the minority in that thing. But that's cool because I don't expect to talk to the minority of men over here. The top 20% of men, really the top 10% who want to get in. And I would tell you this, guys. In order to have that 100% mindset, in order to achieve what it is you say you want out of life, you are going to have to change. Change often. Because here's the one thing any intelligent person will tell you. Change is the only thing that is constant in the world. Change is the only constant. 
And there will be people who will fight you to maintain the status quo. So when it's time to move on, move up, grow up, move forward, I've said it before, you're going to have to get comfortable leaving people behind. You better get real comfortable uh, with yourself because you're going to have to swing from this side to that side in order to, to see what's out there for you. You got to, in order to go through one door, you got to open it, push and go through. Why is this, why is this so important? Why is it so problematic? Well, um, yeah, go ahead, Johnny Blaze, because here's the thing, man. More than anything else, more than anything else, I think uh, we as men hold ourselves back. Our inability to change. Thinking it's some virtue. Man, I believed something five years ago, and I, I still believe it to this point. Really? In the facts, in the face of more facts, figures, data, statistics, real world experience, you still aren't going to change your position. Isn't this one of the things that a lot that bothers a lot of black folk? You, you you don't like the old dogma of a Christian church telling you to turn the other cheek, and you know it's a new day. Okay, you don't want to keep forgiving and forgiving and forgiving. All right. But are you willing to change some of your diehard beliefs? This is why the most important thing, when I start out talking about personal development, what is the first thing we talk about? You got to get your head right. How are you going to call this? How are you going to be an Ados black person in this country, especially a black man, and never having never having sat down with a therapist? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? You see what's going on in the country right now, and you have not escaped it. And you're not Superman. If you keep your own counsel, if you're your own therapist, <laughs> you got a bigger problem than me saying this to you. I look at anybody in this country, I look at anybody who talks about their leader, a mover, or a shaker, and especially that shared my reflection, and they said they'd never had, sat down with a counselor or a therapist. And you over the age of 35? Come on, man. See, if you can't, if, if you don't want to get your mind right, that's the foundation of everything. You take you everywhere you go. And if you think you got it, I mean, the arrogance it takes to believe that you got it right at 30 years old and you've been right for the last 20 years. I, I discovered... The answer to the question of the 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 life I I've, I've solved the anti life equation I've solved the life equation to twenty five, and I'm just gonna go around and telling everybody to please get out of here. So I'm such a big proponent of therapy because when you have therapy, uh, big old big swole, you know what happens with therapy? You start to realize you're fallible, you're human, just like anybody else. And you give yourself a grace and mercy to make make changes, to make errors, to be fallible like everybody else. See, black men, you've been told you got to be a superhero. And black women, this that, that's that old strong independent thing. Black people have been told you can't make mistakes. Hell, we even preach some of this stuff. You know, talking about patronizing black business and this and that, you know, but you know, black people will give you one chance, but you can't script. No, 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 no. Now, see, we have to start giving each other room to fail. If we're going to get anywhere and do any of the things that we need to do as men, you're going to have to fail. You're going to have to leave corporate America and start and go. And, and go. The, the, the people who want to own, you're going to have to get out and do the ownership thing, build your own business. And in that, you're going to fail. The average business fails in five years. And it's usually because of the sales, money. It always comes back to sales. The average millionaire has seven failures before he has something. The average entrepreneur has seven failures before something that works. You don't want to fail. Why? Because if you fail, the very, we've been told we can't fail. That's why we stay at the worker level, at the low level, at the average level, because we've mastered average. Shut up. We've mastered average. 
We have mastered average. I can win the game on novice level. I'm the man on novice. Yeah, fam. But what about, you know, advanced, expert, and insane? You have never taken the, you have never tried to play the game on advanced. Why do I know that? Because we got a bunch of horizontal and no vertical. Why do I know that? Because I have to argue with a bunch of grown men about wearing, putting on a suit, about reading a book, about being, speaking more clearly. You know what I mean? Cause, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm talking about the fat Albert Haber maybe, you be wee boo 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 Come on, man. Oh, I'm an educated thug. <laughs> no. No. Nope. So you're going to have to change. If you want the respect that it is you say you want, you want to be this patriarch, this alpha male, or whatever, you're going to have to change. My question is at, what point is, at what point is it time to change? At what point change requires growth? And honestly, it's past time in my opinion, but at what age do a lot of you guys, at what age do you think the average black man needs to start growing up? Because I talk to a lot of brothers who are good dudes, I'm talking to you, and it's like, you, 30 years old, or 25 years, or, or, or 35 years old, but where we are as a group, a lot of other people had, had already surpassed that were doing this in their early 20s. That's why I say stupid stay stuck. It's stupid to stay stuck. It's stupid to not change. It's stupid to continue to think you don't need to take in new information and moderate positions. And if it's always, I, I can't do that because I wouldn't be real, man, get the fuck out of here. I reject all of that. I reject it all because I look at only black men are held to this ridiculous standard. We can't change. We can't evolve. We can't grow. We can't improve. We judge black men in 2020 against themselves in 1980. Excuse me? We, we judge guys today in 2020 against what they said in 1995. Well, you said, he said this back then, but now he's saying this. What? Every other group of men can evolve and grow and mature. But if we do, and here's the thing, we can drop that. We can drop it today. We can, dro we can drop it today. We can stop holding it. We can stop doing this to each other, stop doing it to ourselves. Say, you know what? I'm going to get out there and play by the rules that Brad, Lee, Ahmed, and Enrique play by. I'm going to get out there and be able to change, mature, evolve, my positions like everybody else does. And the people who have a problem with it, they call you fake, phony, whatever, whatever. You just keep on moving like, ain't my fault. Stupid stay stuck, dude. I mean, honestly, what is it getting you? What is it getting you? See, I'm a proponent of playing the game. Oh, yes, I am. I'm a proponent of playing the game. and I'm a proponent, I'm a proponent of playing the game to win. And far too many of you are in the game, but you're playing it on easy mode. You're playing the game to stay in the game, not to win. You're in the game and the other people are winning. Why? Because you're their labor. See, you'll go, you'll go play the game to get the job. You'll cut your hair to get the job. You'll cover up the tattoos. You'll shave off your beard to get the job. You'll change your, you'll change your diction, the way you speak, the way you carry yourself to get the job. But then once you got it, that's it. That's where it stops. You won't keep playing the game to see how high you can go to really get to a place of power where you can affect and make change. Nope. Because here's the thing. When you change, when you open yourself up to more, you open yourself up to more responsibility. And let's be real. It takes a, lot of, it takes a hell of a man to want more responsibility, to want the burden of performance.
See, when you're when you are the, the, the old everybody has had eat cracker jacks before. Have you had cracker jack before? There used to be an old saying, when you're good, they call you cracker jack. That's an old saying. When was the last thing you were good at? When was the last thing you did 100 percent When was the last thing you competed at that you know you were going to dominate and win? When you have that mindset, when you're in the zone like that, you didn't care who, let's say you were good at video games. When you were really good at a video game, when you were in the zone, when you were really good at sports, when you were really good at anything, you didn't care who your opponent was. You didn't, you didn't care who sat across from you. When you were good at Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> when you were good at whatever, when you know you are one of the best, it didn't matter who sat across from you as your opponent. It didn't matter who sat in that chair. It didn't matter who got on the court. You were going to school them. Because you were on top. So when I reject the whole argument, oh, well, you know, I, when this person comes into this space, when this person talks about that, if, if you are on top, it doesn't matter who enters the conversation. It doesn't matter who enters the environment. You carry you everywhere you go. Stupid stays stuck. If I go around people who I haven't seen in a minute, and they're still talking the same way as they were talking five years ago. Same talking points. Same stances. Same outcomes. I bury that group and keep it moving. I, I bury that and keep it moving. I don't try to argue with them. I understand something. Heavy here to understand something. I don't try to change their mind. I damn sure ain't going to argue with them. I'm going to say, what's up, dog? Cool. Good seeing y'all, man. I'm going to keep my mouth closed. What I look like trying to argue with somebody who stuck five years ago. I've done the work. Why don't you to try to convince your lazy ass? If you were you were five years ago and I'm five years ahead on a different conversation, all I'm going to do is have to lower myself down to your level and have you kick my ass with experience because you've been getting better at that same point you was at five years ago. I don't judge it either. I don't judge them, but they damn sure will judge me. Understand something. They damn sure going to judge you. Oh, look at E-Man. Oh, look at Iron Mike. Pfft. Oh, look at him. He, he done went out to college, and now he think he's better than everybody. Look at that dude. He didn't he didn't drop 50 pounds, man. Now he think he's somebody. Oh, now he, now he got a new certification, or he got a new job. Or he out there and got his, he got a new, he got a, a new style makeover, or whatever. Now I look at him, walk around in a suit, thinking, he, thinking he's somebody. You, you got it. Yes. Don't subject yourself to that bullshit, man. When you are better, when you are becoming the better version of you, do not sweat what somebody who's stuck on stupid has to say about you. Because here's the thing. Can they have you? Ha if you follow their advice, do, can they show you that it gives you a better outcome? Or do you want their life? The old saying, misery loves company. Misery loves mindless, in my opinion. Misery loves you to just sit back and say, well, you know what? Maybe I should have just stayed where I was. And why not leave Oklahoma and move to New York City? I could, you know, it was good enough. No, 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 no. The only, your own, <laughs> all this whole thing about competition and da, da, da. Every man knows it's really it, it, the essence of competition is you against you. It's you against you. You against you of yesterday. 
the day before, the week before, a month before, a year before? Are you better off now? Are you moving forward? And if you're not moving forward, yes, you're moving backwards because the world is going here. And if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. No, I man, that's not logically right, man, because if the world's going that way and I'm here, I'm not moving backwards. You are compared. You are from from our standpoint. We're getting further away from you and you're getting smaller in the rearview mirror. You, phys you physically may not be moving backwards, but staying stuck is the same thing. So over here, I'm talking about becoming uh, <clears throat> confident, intelligent, and assertive. All the things we talk about over here, understand something. It is going to require change. It's going to require growth, evolution. It's going to require failure. Wash, rinse, repeat. People are going to talk about you. But understand, if you were not a black man, would they be talking about you? I don't see any other group of men who talk, laugh at each other for, for saying, speak better. Carry yourself in a different way. Put on a suit. Dress like a grown damn man. Take off the tennis shoes and the, sweat, and the hoodies and the sneakers and the sweatpants and athletic wear. Leave that shit where it belongs. Stupid stay stuck. So as far as I'm concerned, if you're not moving forward, if you're doing the same shit in 2020, talking about the same shit as you were talking about in 2018, 2017, 2015, shame on you. Let's see what's going on in the chat room. There you go. Say so you talk white. Yep. Kevin Gordy said, the worst thing I ever did was to graduate from college and go back to my home crowd and go back to my crowd. Exactly, man. See, worst thing I ever did was uh, continue to improve and, and, and develop and then think and assume that other people around me that I grew up with wanted the same thing. Because when you go to college or whatever and you come back home and you try to share the knowledge because you're excited, you're like, man, I learned some new stuff. And y'all didn't know it because you didn't have the opportunity or it, the times are different. Wow, I'm really excited to share this with you because we're family, right? And I, and I actually had the opportunity, made the opportunity or whatever. Let me share with you. And they turn around and shit on you. I look at you, you went out to that white man's school, now you think you're better than us. And you're confused. You're like, what? What? I just came back and tried to share what I learned, and now you insulting me? You're confused. You're like hurt and all this other kind of stuff. What you didn't realize is they weren't talking to you. They were talking to themselves through you. What they were saying is, damn, I wish I would have went and did what you did. But instead, I made the choices I made and I'm stuck right here. What's going on, Nate? What's going on, Melody? You know, I make no bones about it. Anybody who knows me knows that I came to YouTube for business. I'm an image consultant. Everybody knows what I do straight up make no bones about it people are making millions of dollars here and you think i'm going to sit around and not to partake a part of that commerce i want to take all the black folks and all the people i want to take all the men who think like me and realize you know what i'm tired of not being able to live in this world and move like everybody else when i made that video said you belong here too that was my that was your, that was me giving you a get out of jail free card Mental get out of jail free card. It's up to you to use that motherfucker every day. When I made the video says women aren't the enemy, 
It was me giving you a mental get out of jail free card. When I said men should pay for everything and women should be hypergamous, it was me giving you a get out of jail free card. Both sides of it. I've been saying it before and I said it again. The extremes of any side are the loudest people, but it's the people in the middle. The silent people, the people who don't scream all the time, the people who don't have such extreme views, they're the people who really move this thing. Hell, the group I, I put together, the mix, there's almost 200 people in there. Oh, by the way, uh, I have a group on Facebook called The Mix. It's for CIA men and FBI women for personal and professional networking. Feel free to join. Let me let me put the link down in the description. You know, I don't I don't live my life according to what other people think I should be doing with it. I love that when people tell you. You know, what you should be doing with your business, your platform, your, man, you should be doing this and you should be doing that. Well, if that's the case, you do it. I'll Let's see what happens. You should be living your life, Melody. You should be living your life, Nate. And Nate, if you want a, if you want Melody, go get her. Melody, if you want him, man, go get him. But I'd be damned if we sit around telling people, you can't have what it is you know you want. Because of what I believe, hmm. what I eat don't make you shit. Amber Nui, good stuff today. Good stuff. So understand something. Over here, I'm, I'm going to continue to say it. I, mean, I think anybody would, who's watching any of my videos know that I have high standards for myself. And I demand high standards for men who say they want things. I don't demand high standards for every man. I demand high standards for men who say they want to be confident, intelligent, and assertive. I demand high standards for men who raise their hand and say, I want the best out of life. If you, if that ain't you, I ain't going to try to hold you to that. Same thing with women who say, hey, I want the best out of life. I want to find me one of those Blake Henry's or Blue Henry's or a hit squad. Or I want to be FBI. Yeah, I like the whole Phoebe and Gidget thing. Okay, well, guess what? I'm going to hold you to that standard because I'm not going to tell my boys they got to re reduce their standard and or oh, wait. See, one of the problems is I believe that's possible. I know it's possible. I've done it for myself. I see other people do it. I come into situations with good faith because I know what I'm capable of. That's what you're going to find when the stupid stays stuck. Stupid stays stuck tend to think the worst of people, the worst of situations. And I'm not going to try to change people who think the worst of stuff. Who think shit ain't never going to change. It's always, it is what it is and it's always going to be. Cool, do that. I'm over here. I'm going to keep going forward. And you stay stuck. What's going on, Hot Lips? One of the biggest problems, I said it before, if you're having the same argument, you're having the same positions, one of the things that I notice with people who's stuck on stupid or stupid staying stuck ad hominem attacks they tend to make it personal that's where it really comes down to because you can never move forward even when you do old sales tactic grant the argument you really really challenge what and that's what happens a lot of times on this channel you hear me when I talk to people I just ask questions you said this, I'll ask you that question. And you'll find that sometimes the, the times where it ends up going off the rails, it's not my words to do it. It's their own words. But when the times when the conversations work and they flow and they're smooth, well, you tend to find out that people are coming in situations in a good faith possibility abundance mentality that's 
what is created in these spaces in this space and it tends to drive stuck on stupid or or stay or people who don't want to do anything it drives them crazy why why does it drive them crazy well iron mike it drives them crazy because they see a brother like you coming over here and you may have some die hard red pill patriarchal whatever, whatever kind of views, but you ain't calling women all kind of bitches and hoes and sluts and tramps and motherfuckers. You ain't got to do all that. But your standard is still where it is because you put yourself in front and say, before I got it, I got to do the work on Iron Mike. I got to do the work on me. But once I, once I do what I need to do and get myself to where I am my own best competition, then yes, I can start looking at the people around me and say, hey man, if we're going to share time, share space together, I just expect you to be the best version of you, too. And if not, that's cool, but I'm going over here. See, we're so used to folks judging folks for not being where you were. And that was one of my big challenges. I had to get over. I told you guys how I was a horrible first time manager, how I failed spectacularly. One thing I learned about me is when I think I'm the most right especially when I was younger, when I thought I was the most right is where I was usually in the most danger to myself because I was blinded by wanting to be right. But I told, I've also said it before. I gave that up when I said, you know what? I don't have to be right. I'll be good with being correct. I learned how to shut the hell up and just let it go. And that's a continual work in progress. We all got that. But it is stupid to stay stuck there. What kind of what kind of dude would I be like, Iggy Six, if I still had to talk to the people like I talked to people 25 years ago, and I just I'm gonna beat you down because I know I'm right. What do I gain from that, man? What do I gain from that? Even if I beat you down for an hour with this quick retort, this 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 this, Iggy's gonna resent me. It's in the 48 Laws of Power. Win through your actions, never through an argument. And stuck on stupid tends to want to win the argument. That's why I talk about hashtag show your work. Your work shows everything, dudes. What did I say a couple of weeks ago? You can shut up the average woman with your work. I have women who do not fuck with me, don't like me at all. But they was like, because they know it's true. Yeah, you can shut us up with your work. Please believe. Because you've already shown that you're willing to do something. So that's where we're at, man. Mr. Allen, what's going on, fam? Suit Monday, <laughs> baby. It suits all the time over here. But you know, here's the thing. Uh, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be imperfect. We'll get there, though. You know, a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. Um... I'll leave that to other places. I can't be everything to everybody. Look, man, I'm going to stay in my image lane, my life coach lane. We're going to have our little mix thing going on. But, <laughs> hey, man, at the end of the day, you know what it is you want, Mr. Allen. You, you said it. Go get it. I want you to go out there and look Brad in the eye, Lee in the eye, Ahmed in the eye, and Enrique in the eye. I want you to look them all in the eye and say, I'm going to kick your ass. And I want you to go out there and get it. And when you win and you get first place, they're going to give you a pat on the back. If you come in second place, you give whichever one of them a pat on the back. All right, Lee, you got me. You got me this time, but I'm going to get you next time. How do you lose with that kind of mindset? How do you lose when you always say, I'm, I'm going to get you the next time? Or when you're on top, you do what you got to do to stay on top. Well, the women and everything we talk about, the women, when you are doing what you have to do, you guys have seen it. Women tend to follow work. And once you've done it for yourself, once you've done it for yourself, that's cool. But you can't quit right there. You can't quit your, can't, only Carter, you can't quit right there, fam. Only Carter come back saying, what's up? What's up, Godfather? Man, I'm out here doing it, man. I got my CIA thing on. 
I'm making $300,000 a year, blah, 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 blah. Great, man. Cool. Glad you're up there. How? What brothers are you working on with? What men are you working with? What are you building vertically? Great. You got the horizontal thing good. Your paper straight, this is straight, that straight, good. That's good. What's the vertical? What's next? It's always going to be what's next for me, fam. We're going to celebrate the wins, but it's always what's next. What's next? How we? How do we expand this? How do we scale it? Oh, man, scale, man. I'm good. I'm, I'm chilling. I'm good right here. You cussing at me when you say shit like that. When you say I'm good, I don't... Th- not a, no, that goes over here. I'm good. Mm-mm. I'm good means retirement. We ain't retired yet. I'm good. Nah. You make it three, make eight. You make it three, make eight, hire five. You make it three, make eight, hire two. You make you make eight, hire two, make one point six, hire five. Div- Go in, another, go in another industry. Go in something completely opposite than what you're doing. I'm good. I'm content. Huh. No, it's always the work. I just think you still got Warren Buffett and these guys out there still doing what they do. They ain't quit. See, when you go away with a 100% mindset, when you're never expecting to quit, you quit when you die. Death is when you quit. See, far too many of us, I'll talk about me. Being come from a blue collar family in Oklahoma, if you got to $70,000 a year, you were in the top 3% of earners. So if you got to $100,000, oh my God. But I'm, I cracked 100000 the fourth time when I was in New York City. Here's the difference in Dallas. It's still close enough to Oklahoma. It still puts you in a, a nice a nice way of living. When I went to New York, and I really started to see what people in that city and world were doing, when I went out to Ham- to that Connecticut for Thanksgiving and to the Hamptons for the summer, and I'm like, <laughs> we flew out. And got off a helicopter, and this was our summer home, and we had a we have a servant staff and cars to pick from, and I'm like, I took my little six figure ass back on into Manhattan. And I was like, oh, I didn't know. I just thought because again, I had the Atari 2600 version of the video game. I had the Atari 2600 version Missile Command or Space Invaders. It didn't have levels. It was just one level. But see, they got Intellivision and ColecoVision, and they got Atom, then they got Nintendo 64, then they got Game Boys and Playstations and Sega Genesis and all this other kind of shit. And guess what? In those games, they had different graphics, different different cheat cards, different levels. Then they had the arcade games. And I'm like, well, goddamn, I thought Atari 2600 was it. Yeah, nigga, you was good over here. Cool. You mastered that. But here's the rest of the world. And it was real easy to... It was it was tempting to stay over in the 2600 world because I was the man over here. I was like, you know, if I'm really the man, I should be able to go over there. And guess what? I went over here and I got my ass kicked. I got fucked up. I got beat up playing Mortal Kombat and Final Instinct and, and uh, Street Fighter and all the other games. I was like, dang. Oh, you get the, the, little, the little Asian kid coming in and they housing you. But guess what? I stayed in it. I kept fighting. Next thing you know, you're winning. And what don't you see? You don't see black men really competing on a global level because we have, we got to continue to work. There is no good enough. There is no end game. There is no goal. There's just another level. Always. You aren't going to finish the mission of your life. Once your body gives up or whatever, whatever, you should have stuff to hand off to the next, whoever your legacy is, whether it's your biological children or whatever. That's the mindset of of builders and warriors everywhere else. We don't do good enough. Good enough is stuck. Stuck on stupid, stuck on stupid, stupid gets stuck. Basically, it's wanting to quit. And stop and say, man, I've been doing this hard, man. Now I want to rest and relax. You rest and relax in first class. 
What are you talking about? Rest and relax in first class. Even when you rest and relax in the first class, the plane is still fucking going that way. You need to learn how to rest and relax in first class, but it's still going. So, at the end of the day, stupid stay stuck. Change is the only constant thing. It's 2020. It's June 1st, 2020. How much, how, how different are you from January 1st, 2020? We're officially six months in. Please don't tell me you have not had any growth in half a year. If so, shame on you. Now it's time to recommit. Recommit and say, I wasted the first half of 2020. Let me get my ass in gear and get caught up to where I should be so I can end this year strong. I'm good enough is out of the vocabulary. All right, folks. Uh, let me check something out. Let me see if I have any questions. Shout out to the new viewers. Um, shout out to them. We have a lot of new people joining the channel. Um, for the people who don't understand some of the things I talk about, I'm going to need moderators to kind of help me. CIA is for men. It's not. We're not operatives. CIA is confident, intelligent, and assertive. That's what I... I need men to be, to become, to scratch the surface and become the best version of themselves. Women, I need them to be FBI, feminine, beautiful, and inspirational. That's the compliment to a CIA man. There's no downside for a woman being feminine, beautiful, inspirational to herself. Over here, we don't do that. Well, what? why do I need to do this for that? That's not why we do it. You don't become CIA for women. You don't become FBI for uh, FBI for, for me. You become it for yourself. Over here, I talk to the Henrys. High earners, not rich yet. That's who I speak to. I speak to the men who want to be in the top 10% to the top 5%. The ones who want to either go white collar or blue collar, blue Henrys. Over here, we, we, over here blue collar brothers get much love. But we're talking about enterprising blue collar men. We're talking about tradesmen. Who, who do their work, get their skills, who want to build and own their own thing, to own their own enterprise. B white collar, blue collar. Blake Henry, blue Henry. Blake stands for Brad Lee, Ahmed, Keith, and Enrique. Brad's the white guy, Lee's the Ch Asian guy, Ahmed's the Middle Eastern guy, Keith, that's the brother, and Enrique, that's the Hispanic dude. Blake Henry. Blue Henry is an amalgamation of all those guys to just blue collar world. And my guys are just 25 and under. They're in the hit squad. Henry's in training. Over here, I expect guys from 17 to 27, really 18 to 30, to have their heads down, eating shit, and doing what they have to do. I expect men over here to be putting in 60 hours minimum a week that you're getting paid for. I expect guys over here to be taking at least 5% of their gross and investing it in their personal development and self-improvement. And that is not, N-O-T not, certifications or more college. That is coaching, personal trainers. Business, that's, that, is, that is the stuff that every other man out here is doing to improve their overall skill sets. I expect us to do all of that, spend all 10 of those plates at one time. I expect you to have a social life. Even from 18 to 30, while you're grinding, I still expect you to get out, have your fun, but I expect you to still get to the art museum, the American Heart Association, Habitat for Humanity, all this other shit. Yeah, man, sleep less. You get four to five hours of sleep. Six, if you, six is the most you can get. That's it. And this is not, and it's not to just land something. I don't expect guys to do this just to land a bad bitch or a woman to do this just to land a dude. No, this is a lifestyle. This is a lifestyle where you set the bar high for you and surround yourself with like-minded people and get in there and get after it. Shout out to uh, 
Shout out to everybody that came through, guys. My, uh, it's getting a little late, but here's the thing. I'm going to, I'm going to run down some of these super chat questions that, cause YouTube is changing things, guys. And I need to grab a bunch of these super chat questions. Some that I haven't been able to answer. If I didn't get a chance to answer yours, uh, I'm going to, uh, address as many as I can. I'm going to do a special show for that. I'll probably on, later on this way, I'll announce it. <clears throat> if you want to join the mix, Naima keeps putting it in there. Guys, do me a favor. Um, all that's required is your 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 age, your current marital sta your current status, and what kind of relationship if you're interested in any. All I expect you to go be over there is be grown folks, be grown folks. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, so appreciate everybody. Uh, today's Monday, Tuesday. The Lions Den is going to be revamped. Uh, still working on that concept. Um, what else is an update? I reached out to that sister who, with the 3D fashion show for her line. I got some things that I really want to do for the guys to where I do my... This year was supposed to be about project upgrade where I, I style six or eight guys. But you see what happened with uh, the CV. Still trying to figure that out. But helping men become the best version of themselves from the look standpoint, the image standpoint. And to see, when I see a sister do the, the kind of work she did, I'd love to be able to style some folks in that. Any ideas you guys have? I mean, this is your channel, men. This is a man's channel. This is a men's space. Women are definitely welcome. You're our guests. Guys, believe it or not, this channel has jumped up to over 20% female. Uh, but it's still what it always has been. I expect you to have a 100% mindset. Whether or not, I don't care how you structure your individual stuff. But I expect you to be able to look any man in the face and tell him you can beat him. That's going to be the next video. The primary rules of manhood. The primitive stuff, how all of us look at each other. And that is one of the big disconnects with us as brothers. We were tank. We were, the black community in general, brothers in particular, we got sold away from ownership, hard work, sweat. We got sold, uh, we got, we were lured away from the benefits of hard work, ownership, and sweat. And, and, and the thing that really comes down is that ownership. You know, working, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. And to get competitive, I want all you guys to go learn some sort of martial art. You need to be able to protect yourself, man. You, you should not have anything in your life that you cannot protect and defend. You want a bona fide bad one on your side? Guess what? If you walk in there and she got that Coke bottle going on, man, somebody somewhere is going to say something out of line. And if you, don't, if you cannot handle yourself, you don't need to have her. And that's, and that's a twist for a lot of guys because a lot of us raised by that by mama, she wanted to keep us safe. And you know good and doggone well, your hands are not calibrated. Your jaw is not strong. And you got to rely on another man to come to your defense, security, the bouncer, the po, -po whatever. You got to fix that, man. I don't care. If, yeah, make no mistake. I'm always in a suit, but stay calibrated. Trust me, my bag work is impeccable. Hmm. Tell you something, you white collar dudes. One of the best thing you can do for yourself is go get go go learn boxing, wrestling, Brazilian jiu jitsu, Wing Chun. Find something. You need to go somewhere where you're going to have to actually get in a ring and get punched in the face real fucking hard, real hard. I mean, real hard. You'll finally know who you are in this world as a man when you get punched real hard it is a spiritual experience for us you will know who you are and then you'll also know what level you are on and what you need to do but when you know that you can defend yourself if need be your whole way of carrying yourself in this world is different and I'm not come on man y'all know I'm not talking about it going out here looking for trouble and you know, that ain't how men who can really take care of themselves move. 
But that confidence, I want you to be confident in more than just your intelligence. I want you to be confident in your overall masculinity, however your appearance is and you choose to project that. I want you to be intelligent, move in that way. But at the end of the day, your confidence and intelligence means nothing if you don't assert. And far too many black men have been cowed into not asserting. So what is the opposite of a CIA man? What is the opposite of a CIA black man? Well, the opposite of confident is timid. The opposite What do we got going on in here? Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I also talk about becoming a bag. Bold, ambitious, and generous. That's the top level, guys. And see, what's the opposite of bold? The opposite of bold is timid. The opposite of ambitious is lazy. And the opposite of generous is cheap. Selfish or cheap? Well, over here we were talking about becoming the bag, not becoming TLC, scrub. See how this all works? I need to put a flow chart together with this shit. Anybody good with graphics? Put CIA first level, second level, and the bag, FBI, CIA, TLC. We got a lot of little catchphrases. Shirts are coming. Yes, shirts are coming. Image matters is coming. Image matters is coming along with some other stuff. We got it coming. Do push-ups on your knuckles. That's right. Break some shit up, man. All right, folks. I got to get up out of here. I'm going to try to keep my monologues under an hour. I went over. Um, we will be having a call-in show or two this week. You will be able to be heard. That's coming up. And I've also fixed the lag problem. It's an internal software issue. So I got a fix for it. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right, guys, until the next time, we are out of here, people. We got to get on out, get on out, get on out. Deuce. Join me on Patreon. Patreon stream will be Wednesday. Days was postponed to Wednesday. Join me on IG daily stream. You will only see there the crap. Peace out, people. Yeah.